Hello there and welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. This is episode 52 and I am Amy Polko and I'm coming to you from Edinburgh, Scotland. And this is where I like to share with you my knitting practice and my knitting projects. It's been a little bit quiet on my YouTube channel, not very quiet behind the scenes. Things have been incredibly busy here. I had hoped to record episode 52 a couple of weeks ago, but it just did not happen. And for reasons I will explain at the end of this episode, because really I want to focus today on the knitting itself. And there's quite a lot of it, despite the fact that things have been so busy, but because it has been a longer period of time, I do have a fair few projects to be sharing with you. I've also managed to draw a card for us. I've managed to find a poem for the end, but I don't have any notes written down. So we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants here, sort of taking a running jump, so to speak. <laughs> and because of that, there will be relatively little editing done on this video. So I'm not gonna be including in uh, titles or images. Uh, all of the information is going to be in the description box below. So please do check that out if there's anything that you want to find out about. There's also a link there to my Patreon page. If you click through to that, you will get a free to access post, which includes the show notes, but also some images too that accompany the show notes. You can also join and sign up to my Patreon and I have various different levels of support that you can sign up for. And there's lots of different rewards and things to, to do with knitting, but also to do with sacred practice and the goddesses, which is my, my main work. So, all that is there. <laughs> but to begin with, I want to share with you the card that I drew. And actually, this is from a new deck. I was a bit naughty. I bought a new deck. Just can't resist decks. <laughs> so this is an oracle deck. This is Femme Folk. And it's by Annette Pierso and Israel Gonzalez. And um, I will share the Instagram page for this because it's what inspired me to buy the deck. It's incredibly beautiful. The illustrations are just stunning. Let me show you some of them. So here we have Quan Yin for compassion. We have Maeve for influence. I love her dress. Aren't, aren't these gorgeous? We have Dodola for cleansing. One more. We have, oh my goodness, I can't pronounce that name, but it is incredibly beautiful dress and kimono and uh, just absolutely stunning. So yes, beautiful cards and um, just stunning. And the one that I've drawn for us for today is this one here and it's Hathor Generosity. So I'm just going to read you the guide. The goddess Hathor approaches you bearing the bountiful gift of generosity. While there's nothing wrong with spoiling yourself every now and again, we must remember that a great number of people in the world are not able to do the same. We should not look to take on the burdens of others, but rather do our best to lighten their load wherever possible. This does not always mean monetary donations, for even a kind smile to a stranger or allowing a fellow motorist the opportunity to change lanes in front of you can seriously impact the rest of that person's day in a positive way. This requires remaining cognizant of how you treat those around you, regardless of the time or place, so that Hathor can ensure your generosity is delivered with the most noble of intentions. I really love that because I think, you know, generosity is one of those this is like a generosity of spirit, you know, how we approach one another and um, we can assume best intentions. We can assume that we're all doing our best um, and perhaps those assumptions may lead us, lead us astray, so to speak. But I would rather, I would rather, you know, move forward in my life with that level of generosity of spirit than others. Um, I think kind words go a long way. I think kind actions go further. And I think we can be generous with others, but also we can be generous with ourselves. We can speak to ourselves with loving voices and we can be kind and gentle to the to our own to our own sense of well being so that we so that we can be we can be more generous with others. So generosity, there we go. 
And certainly I'm trying to be generous to myself at the moment in regards to my own creative practice and my own knitting mojo, which, like I said, um, things are very hectic and very busy around here. So I haven't been able to do quite as much knitting as I would normally do. And I would say not a day goes by when I don't do some knitting. Uh, and that's been my daily practice for years and years and years and years. But uh, I have found myself the last couple of weeks that some days when I get to the end of the day, I can't actually knit. And so that's been, that's been quite challenging for me because that's not really how I, um, how I go through my, my life, how I go through my day. Um, it's not really how I think of myself either. So that's, uh, that's quite bewildering, I suppose. But I do have quite a bit of knitting to show you regardless of that, because like I said, it's been quite a wee while since, our, since my last recording. So let me show you what I have, because the very first thing, well, let me share with you what I'm wearing, because that would be a good place to start. This is the Saturday Shrug, and it's a beautiful shrug pattern in this one by one rib, and it's by Jackie Rose of the Jackson Rose podcast. And it's knitted in the most beautiful hand-spun yarn, which I think is a mix between merino and baby alpaca. And it was spun for me by Ivana of the Republic of Me podcast. And I'm wearing it really in honour of both of these wonderful women, because they are both coming over to Edinburgh for the Wooly Good gathering uh, in April, at the end of April. And so I'm so excited to see the pair of them and to meet them and uh, share time and share food and share stories and share knitting time. So I'm wearing this beautiful shrug today and it feels like a hug from both of them, encouraging me to, to podcast and actually get on with sharing some of my knitting today. <laughs> Which takes me on to what I want to share with you first. Now, I've, I know that I've shown you these before, but I'm going to share them again because this weekend, this Saturday, this pattern is finally going to release. This is the The Gither Cowl. The Gither means together, so it's all one word, um, and it means, well, it means to be together. I, re I called it that because it's inspired by tartan, and the tartan was inspired by the yarn which is the Scottish Wool Producers, not Scottish Wool Producers Showcase, the Scottish Yarn Festival's four-ply yarn. And it's all named after clan names. So this here is Wallace, this is Duncan, and this is the grey is Tate. You can see them there as well. And so I wanted to take these clan names and create some tartan um, in, or tartan inspired knitting. So it's knitted as a tube. So you're not doing any back and forth knitting, which kind of creates like a double thickness. So it's nice and cozy. You take the same three colors, but you rotate them. So each colorway gets an opportunity to be either the main color, the contrast color, or the accent color. And what amazed me was just how incredibly different each one of these tartans <laughs> looked by switching around the colorways. So it is relatively simple colour work because there is no, uh, there's no uh, st section of the chart where you have to catch your floats because there's no more than five stitches of one colour. So you're not having to catch your floats and, um, and you become quite familiar, I think, with the pattern in general. So you don't, you, after a while, I found that I didn't have to, to refer to the chart, that I just knew what was coming up next. This, uh, this was the first one that I knitted and I experimented with a couple of different ways to join the ends because you start with a provisional cast on and uh, then you uh, knit the whole, the whole tube and then you put your stitches on hold and then you wash and block it. And then once it's dried, you can then sew your ends together. Now, as I said, I tried a couple of different ways. I tried a Russian join and um, that looked very messy. I then tried this way, which was a three needle bind off, uh, sorry, two needle bind off. Um, and I was not happy with how that, oh, it's a three needle bind off. 
<laughs> I was not happy because obviously it looks quite bulky, it's quite ugly. But by this point, I'd already unraveled. And when you're unraveling with a provisional cast on, I think you've only got so many attempts <laughs> before you start causing yourself big problems. So I kind of had to leave it with that. But I then cast on a second one, which is this one. So the colorway is here, Christy Anderson and this lovely sort of light aqua here is Bruce. Now I was saying actually when I look at, particularly when I, when I look at this section here, it makes me think of Iron Brew, which is kind of the, I mean, if, you might think that whiskey is the Scottish national drink, but actually Scotland is one of the only places I think in the world where the most popular fizzy juice is not Coca-Cola, it is Iron Brew. <laughs> And Iron Brew branding colours are, are this orange and these two shades of, of uh, turquoise and, and teal. Uh, I was speaking to Eva from the Scottish Yarn Festival just yesterday as a, an Instagram live. And actually, if you go to my Instagram, you'll be able to see the reel there um, that Eva saved. And she was saying she, it, the colours reminded her of a kingfisher, which I think is also very beautiful. But yes, I managed to figure out, in fact, we, where even is it? <laughs> I managed to figure out how to do, I think, yes, that's it, um, how to do the join and I used um, Kitchener stitch or grafting stitch in order. And it's not perfect because I have to say that's not a technique I'm particularly brilliant at, but I did give it a good go. <laughs> But there we go, I did a join, and that's a much smoother, much better way of joining it, I think. It's not certainly not as noticeable as the three needle bind off. So it's, uh, it's definitely the better way to go. Now, when I joined this one, <laughs> this is a bit of a story. When I joined this one, I was absolutely convinced, possibly because I saw it looking like that, that I had twisted it twice. Um, and so on the next one, I consciously twisted it twice. And then I put it on and then I realized that uh, it wasn't sitting the same way as the first one. So let me show you. This is the first one. And one of the things I loved so much about this um, was that it sat so beautifully around my neck. So, and it was just, I don't know, I just really loved the way that it, that it sat and how cosy it was up by my neck and I could bring it down a little bit like this and I could tuck it inside my jacket and it was just, yeah, really lovely and cosy. And on very cold days um, earlier on this year, I was able to wear uh, an extra shawl underneath so to keep my back and my shoulders cosy and this was up right up around my neck and it was just, yeah, fabulous. I love this one and I love this. I love these colourways so much. So, as I said, I was convinced that I had twisted this twice, so I twisted it twice on this one. Where is the join again? I must have done a good job on that join because I keep losing it. There it is. <laughs> so here we go. And, uh, and so when I went to put it on, I realised that it was, I mean, it was still sitting okay. I don't think there's anything not, not nice about it, but it wasn't sitting in quite the same way as the other one. So I got my husband to look at it for me, who incidentally is through in the other room painting just now. So if you can hear some background noises, then um, then that might be that might be him. Um, so he had a look at it for me and he said, no, definitely. This one has one twist in it and this one has two twists in it. So the choice is yours when you knit this. <laughs> you can twist it once, you can twist it twice or you can not twist it at all. Um, it's going to be completely your choice, obviously, but I'm going to recommend in the pattern that we just twist it the once. So that's the two of the of option one. I have an option two for you, and this is something that I just finished, finally finished this week. Actually, I did the knitting on it um, a wee while back, but it's taken me a wee while to um, to actually be able to do the the stitching. And this is a shorty version. So this is Gordon, this is Baird, and this is uh, this is Duncan. So basically what I've done is I've taken two colour ways, made one the main colour and one the contrast, and then I've flipped them around. So 
the contrast color becomes the main and the main becomes the contrast. And I've kept the accent color the same the whole way through. So let me show you what it looks like on. So basically I was wearing this one like this. And so we've got this twist. It's just got one twist, this one. <laughs> there we go. Move my hair out of the way so you can see. So again, you've got the, the, co the cozy coverage of the double fabric because it's this knitted tube. Um, and it's up around the back of your neck and you can see the two different shades. In fact, as I was knitting this, an uh, image popped up on Instagram of Demi Moore wearing a beautiful jacket and it was exactly these colours with almost exactly the same check. It was really quite amazing. <laughs> but uh, but yes, this is the this is the shorter version. So this uses much less yarn. This one, um, as I said, this is a Scottish uh, Yarn Festival four ply custom blend, which is a Cheviot Shetland blend. It is just Honestly, it's so lovely because it's rustic, but it is very soft. Otherwise, I don't think you'd be able to wear it as comfortably as you can up around your neck. And it is, you know, the neck tends to be quite a, a sensitive place uh, for, for wearing uh, rustic yarns. But, uh, but this is very, very soft. <laughs> I'm trying to get this to, um, unfortunately, I'm wearing a slight roll neck, which is not really sitting all that great with the, with the shorter. There we go, that's better. <laughs> um, so yes, it feels completely comfortable next to skin. It's beautiful soft. Uh, there's actually a couple of new colours, I think, that have just been added to the range. Innis, which uh, looks like a, a neutral, and Sinclair, which is a beautiful gold. So, um, so yes, a couple of new colours been added to the range, and I think there's going to be an, an Aran as, uh, available as well, and there's a DK range out also. And there's a few stockists of it now over in the States, including the Woolly Thistle. And I, I think Eva is going to be bringing some of her yarn to the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase this Saturday, which is where I'm going to be launching the pattern. So the Gither is going to be available on Ravelry and on Payhip. So if Ravelry is a problem for you, then I will make it available on Payhip, which is what I've done with both the Kurian, which was my poncho pattern, and the Gallus scarf, which was the colour blocked short row scarf pattern. Uh, so they are both available, oh, the, yes, both available on uh, Ravelry and Payhip, and the Gither will, will join them this Saturday. And at the Scottish Wool Producer Showcase, I will be I will be doing a designer spotlight from one till four. So if you're going to be there, maybe you could pop along and, and say hi. I know that tickets have sold out, however. So if you don't have a ticket, then please don't come along because unfortunately there, will no, there won't there will be any tickets on the door. Uh, I know that uh, Eva was saying that they're absolutely at capacity now. And, uh, and you know, they sold out last year as well. So it is a very popular event and it is a smaller event too um, because these are these are all Scottish wool, well, they're, they're small wool producers and uh, and they're doing really kind of a small batch uh, of their products and uh, so it's a very exciting event and lots of really interesting interesting wool, interesting blends um, and you really get an opportunity to speak to the people who are involved in the in the creation of them. So, uh, so it's a lovely event to be part of. I'm really looking forward to being there on Saturday and I'm looking forward to sharing this design. And so I'm going to be bringing along all three of these. And I know that, um, that the lovely Maggie as well has knitted, yeah, who's um, yarn sock, not yarn song. Scott Knit, Yarn Song is her daughter. <laughs> Sorry, Rebecca. Yarn Song does amazing, beautiful stitch markers, which I don't actually have with me on hand because I bought some recently and they were just exquisite. So go and check her out. And Maggie is Scott Knit on Instagram and uh, she's got, she has knitted a beautiful sample for Eva. And so she's going to be be bringing that along too. So we're going to have a few samples of the Gither for you to see there and I'll also bring along my samples of the Curian 
and of the gallus. So that's quite, I've got quite a few samples of the gallus <laughs> and I've got two samples of the curian. So, uh, so yes, I'll bring those along so that you can see them there too. And, uh, and yeah, so I think that's going to be really exciting. But yes, this is going to be on Ravelry and Payhip from Saturday. Uh, and next week, I think I'm going to do a little kind of celebration giveaway over on Instagram. So if you're not connected with me on Instagram, I would go and do that just now, just to make sure that you don't miss out on, on that giveaway. And the reason why I'm doing it there and not this week on the YouTube channel is because I have a... Uh, have an extra uh, bits, extra few bits and pieces and I can't find them just now and again I will explain why later but um, yes once I've retrieved those <laughs> I'll put together a little prize package and maybe I'll be able to pick up a few bits and pieces at the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase and add that in. So that will be on Instagram next week at some point. And actually, oh, I can show you one of the things that I'm going to be including in that giveaway and it's this beautiful book here, which was gifted to me by Search Press, who are the publishers. And it's by Anna Dervu, um, who is a long avec Anna. And it's called Colour Work in the Round. And I thought this would be the perfect, uh, the perfect thing to give away, perfect um, publication to give away as part of um, a celebration of the, the Gither's launch because it's all about knitting in the round. And this is not all knitted in the round. Incidentally, very few ends to weave in because it's knitted in the round because all the ends are inside. <laughs> Makes things very simple. <laughs> but yes, here we go. Colour Work in the Round. It is a beautiful book. It's basically got lots of these tutorials. It takes you through from the very basics. It gives you advice on what kind of yarn you might want to use, what kind of needles, how to choose your colours, how to read a colour work chart. It also tells you about um, color dominance to make sure that uh, that your color, um, your contrast color really pops. It's also got a little section on intarsia and uh, there's a, quite a lot on stranded color work and it gives you a few options on how to um, hold your yarn and different techniques for, um, for stranded colour work, including uh, whether you wanted to knit with two colours in a row or three colours in a row. Um, there's, there's a bit on colour dominance. Uh, see, if, see if you can see it. <laughs> so, um, uh, I don't think you will see it very clearly, but in one of these, one is uh, the red is being held dominant and the white is not, and then they've been reversed on both sides here. And you can really see a big difference in one, um, in this one here, you can see the pattern much clearer and here the pattern becomes much muddier and that's because the colour dominance has been switched. So that's uh, something this book really kind of describes very well. Um, there's, a, there's some information about sticking. And there is a number of, oh, and also information on how, correct, how to correct mistakes, which, you know, we all make mistakes. <laughs> and then at the very back, there are some patterns. So there's a hat pattern. There's a children's colour work a jumper pattern. It's a little bit of colour work around the bottom here. There is a, um, there's a woman's uh, uh, pattern here. A colour work yoke pattern, a very simple one. And then there's a more complex one that uses three colours in a row, if you want practice on that. And lastly, there is this, uh, it's the same colour work design up the top, but it's actually a steaked cardigan, so it'll take you through the steaking process. So really lovely and, uh, and very, a wonderful beginner's guide to colour work, colour work in the round. So if colour work in the round is new to you or you would like to, or you're very attracted to it, but you don't feel uh, very accomplished in it, but you would like to get better, maybe this would be a really interesting book for you to explore. So I'm going to include that in the giveaway on Instagram next week, along with some other bits and pieces. So that is the The Gither Cowl. Like I said, I'm really pleased with it and I hope that you really enjoy it. 
my emphasis on my knitting patterns is I want it to be a really enjoyable knit and I think this kind of colour work is really enjoyable, it is really fun and, uh, and yes, uh, hopefully a relatively simple but compelling uh, knit that will, will occupy your attention and um, also result in something really beautiful that you enjoy wearing. I will be producing a third option, so you've got this longer option here, should say about yarn quantities actually. Um, this uses 70 grams of each one of these colours. Uh, this, the Scottish Yarn Festival 4 ply is 350 metres to 100 grams and, um, uh, and it uses 70 grams of each colour, whereas the little one, the short one, this is going to use 50 grams of each one of these main colours and about 25 grams of your accent colour. So just to give you an idea of, of quantities. Uh, so there we go. Um, that, Like I said, that pattern will be coming out on Saturday and that's just really exciting. This will be the third pattern I've released. But I will actually be sharing with you another pattern that's going to be released uh, towards the end of April. But before we get that, get to that, I'm going to pop my Saturday shrug back on. There we go. Uh, it's nice and cosy. Uh, before we get to that, let me show you some other knitting. So, oh, actually, I haven't quite, I forgot about this. Uh, and I was saying, I was going to, so you've got the two options for the together. You've got the long cowl, you've got the short cowl. Um, and in September, I'm going to release a third option, which is going to be a scarf option. So this uses Gordon, Wallace and Baird. But as you can see, I have not got very far. It does not look like a scarf. <laughs> it's a very short scarf. <laughs> so I'm going to be busy working away on this. I'm going to release it in September. Um, I've got some ideas for how to finish it off really beautifully. And uh, and if you purchase the cowl pattern just now, then you will receive the third option as a free update. Um, but I will be selling it on uh, Ravelry and Payhip as a separate pattern for those who don't want to buy the cowl. So there we go. That's, uh, that's going to be coming up. We're not quite there with that one yet. But next up, let me show you this. This is what I would love to work on right now because it is completely compelling. I'm so, so loving it. And one of the things that I'm loving so much about it is the yarn itself. So this is my snow crocus. Look at this. And so I've, it's such an interesting construction. I think that's because uh, Jackie of the Jackson Rose podcast is uh, running a series of classes over on her Patreon so that we can all knit this together, make modifications, knitting it in the yarn that we want. And, uh, and I really wanted to knit this in this yarn here, which is, let me get a ball. This is St. Magnus DK and it's a 50% Angora, 50% lamb's wool and 50 grams is approximately 200 meters, which would make me think it's actually more of a four ply, a fingering weight. But actually as you knit it, I would say it is maybe a light DK, perhaps because of the fluff. But I then added in a second strand of the Holst, Holstgarn Titicaca, uh, which is 100% pure thin alpaca. And this is in the color Ecru and you get 400 meters to 50 grams. So it's a pretty true lace weight. So I've been holding those two together. And like I said, such an interesting construction method. And it actually leads you to doing the sleeves first before you knit the rest of the body. Um, it keeps blowing out and then I keep getting shadows. So I'm really struggling to show you. <laughs> show you the colors here but look at the look at the um cables on it it is glorious and it i cannot express to you how incredibly soft and fluffy and what it, can you see this halo it's got a beautiful halo on it it's the yarn is just delicious the pattern is so interesting and engaging uh, the way that the pattern is written 
it has resulted in a very long wordy pattern <laughs> so i think the pattern is over i think it's over 60 pages which is a little bit bewildering when you download it which is partially why jackie has uh, put together this this series of classes but uh, but yes it's once you start reading it through you I mean you you follow it and you know it'll tell you you know to if for your particular size you know skip to page 35 or whatever so um so yes you're not having to read every single page you can it kind of guides you through according to which size you're knitting so yeah it's a compelling knit it's enjoyable my yarn is beautiful and uh, and yeah so i'm really really enjoying that i should say too my bag is a cocoon tree bag of course um these bags are made and designed uh, by my um by my auntie who is the cocoon tree and uh, you can find her on etsy i'll include a link to her as well so the next thing i want to share with you is this yarn is this yarn is this project here this is actually the one i've been doing perhaps the most knitting on in the last couple of weeks um and that's because it is it's just garter stitch <laughs> so i find uh, that i'm so tired by the time i get to the end of the day that i can maybe manage a row or two of garter stitch and sometimes not even that sometimes only only one row but this is my garter goodness i'm knitting it in yarn that i picked up at rhinebeck back in october it's this yarn here which is loop fiber studio and it's the yin yang base which is an inverted colorway yarn and i'm this is the fingering weight is 400 yards to 100 grams which I think must be about 360 meters maybe. So these are mill ends that I've chosen here because I do love a bargain. So this is the color that I'm working with just now. This is the one that I'm going to be moving to. This is the one that I'm just finishing off. And what I'm knitting, I should tell you that, this is the Garter Goodness by Stephen West. I've knitted quite a few of these. I find them very comforting. In fact, you can see this you can see the striping a bit more clearly on that side than you can on I prefer this side because it's a bit more blended um, but you can see that I started off with this yarn here which was kind of this sort of peachy sort of muddy pink along with the the navy and then from there we went into that little ball there that I was showing you which is the navy the white and the red and I just started to stripe it in when I got to about 25 grams left of the first ball. And then I, then once all of that uh, first one ran out, I just used that until I got to 25 grams left. And at that point, I've started to stripe in my next colour, which is what I'm still doing just now. And then I will knit with this solely until I get to 25 grams, at which point I shall move to this. Oh, I did I I just realized that I didn't tell you I didn't tell you who the name of the designer of this or actually even what the name of it is, I think. It's the Snow Crocus by Midori Haros. So it's a it's a beautiful pattern and yeah, I needed to, to tell you that. So now I have. <laughs> um so yes, I'm very scattered. I'm sorry, my loves. This is why I write notes. <laughs> Please forgive me. Be generous with me. <laughs> but yeah, so this is what I'm working on mostly just now, just because it's so relaxing and I don't have to think about it too much. I am really looking forward to moving into this gorgeous uh, bright pink. It's got a little bit of red through it as well. And then we've got this section here. Now I'm not sure about how that's going to look in the uh, in the piece when I get to that point so I'll decide whether I want to include that or whether I want to take that bit of the of the yarn out um, that's to be decided but overall really enjoying this actually these are some of the beautiful stitch markers from Yarn Song there you go I did have some of them with me <laughs> I chose all of these little ones for this project 
because I really like the idea of having these lovely little coordinating flowers all along my all along my needle. So uh, so yes, there we go. Gorgeous. Uh, so that's what I've mostly been working on, and that's um, Garter Goodness by Stephen West. And then the last thing that I've been working on is this. So um, I shared, I think I shared a little sneaky peek of this before. Now I'm calling this the burl because this is a pattern, a design that has been inspired by my grandma's dancing shawl, which I have, which is a beautiful black lace shawl with a fringed edging. And I decided that I wanted to knit, uh, wanted to design a cowl, in fact I need to take this off again, another cowl, but this time kind of like a bandana cowl and one that would be really fun for the spring and summer, perhaps something a little bit more dressy, a bit more extravagant, a bit more evening perhaps, <laughs> depending on what you knit it with. I've knitted it with my, my versions with this beautiful yarn here, which is Sweet Flax by Ginger Twist. And Ginger Twist um, have given me yarn support for this project and they will be selling kits for the burl at the Woolly Good Gathering in April. So let me take you through where I'm at now. Which one was first? This one. So I knitted this one first and this kind of gave me the idea of what I kind of wanted to do with it but um, I was unhappy with a number of uh, things about it. It seemed too deep um, so I changed the rate of uh, the rate of increases and also I didn't, I, it's too short at the back, which I didn't like. It's, there's not enough width at the back. Um, and also I had created extra increases around the back, so I thought it might sit better on the shoulders, but it did not. <laughs> so this was, this was like the first prototype. And it's not awful, but it's not what I wanted. And so I'm gonna have to try. Why on earth did I put this, uh, in fact, let me, hang on a second. Let me take this uh, jumper off, this sweater off, and then you'll be able to see better what this looks like. There we go. So, so yes, I didn't like how, um, how deep it was. I didn't think it was sitting very nicely at the back. And uh, so it was kind of like it was getting close to what I wanted, but not quite. Yeah, slightly too deep, uh, not quite sitting right on the shoulders. There was something about it that wasn't really functioning well. So cast on again. <laughs> and I kept all of these so I could show you. I cast this one on. And so this time um, I made the back a lot deeper and I didn't include any increases at the back this time. And I also changed my rate of increases. Um, so, uh, so it sat a bit better, but again, it wasn't quite, it wasn't quite right around the neck and I couldn't quite figure out what was going on there. So um, I took it along to my best friend Jen who works at Ginger Twist and she had a wee look at it for me and we had a we had a long discussion over a glass of wine and uh, and she said that what she thought I needed to do was to create some decreases down the back so now we've gone from increases across the back to no increases on the back to a third um, iteration that has decreases down the back and then that creates um, a bit more uh, depth at the front uh, so that hopefully the the cowl would sit better. So I tried that and I was much happier with it. And so I went and he went ahead and added what I was really excited about adding and what I'd wanted to add all along, which is the fringe. <laughs> so <laughs> isn't that fabulous? Can you imagine dancing in this? Oh, if it's a proper flapper girl, hey? <laughs> Flapper girl summer. <laughs> so now it sits much better at the back. It sits better at the front. 
the idea was to have it kind of almost like a bit of a cowl neck, but with the but with the fringing. Now, I started with just the fringing along the edges and that would absolutely be an option. You do not need to add all of the extra fringing, although I'm a fringe girl, I think fringe is fabulous. So the more fringe, the better. Fringe for days. <laughs> so I'm very pleased with how the fringe looks, but you wouldn't necessarily have to add all of that fringe. You could just as easily keep it to the fringe at the edges here. Um, so this is a very simple lace. It has a, an eyelet increase down the spine uh, for your central increases. Uh, so it's quite easy to keep a track of. There is no need to use make one lefts or make one rights. There are yarn overs and there are knit twos together and slip slip knits. And then sometimes you are knitting, purling and knitting or purling, knitting, purling. Into, into some of your eyelets to, for the increases. Um, but it's all gonna be explained in the pattern and it should be um, a relatively straightforward um, knit. You begin by knitting it flat and then you join it in the round. So some of your knitting is going to be back and forth um, and then some of it's going to be round and round on a circular needle. And, uh, and yeah, I'll show you those decreases down the back as well so that you can see them. See the alteration that was made? Now you can see now we've got these decreases down the back. And like I said, that just kind of creates a better drape at the front. We've got a bit of eye cord, which then kind of creates a bit more structure um, around the neck. And this is a, uh, which I'm really surprised about actually, this is a one skein project. So you can get all of this out of just one skein of yarn. The Sweet Flax is 400 meters to 100 grams. I measured, I weighed the um, skeins and they were coming to 112 grams. So you should have plenty um, to knit the, knit the cowl, knit the bandana cowl, and then go to town with as much, with as many, uh, as many fringing as you want, as much fringing as you want. Uh, I think you might have a, a really good time exploring kind of what your what your options are with that. Uh, I showed it to my daughter and she said, oh, that would be amazing if you knitted, say if you knitted the bandana um, cowl in black and then you added like variegated um, yarn for the fringe. Um, or you could do different layers of fringe or, you know, you could use up some of your scraps as well. I've got, I've got ideas for what I want to do with this and um, more uh, using some of my scrap yarn. So it's a lot of fun and I love the way it moves. Um, I think it's completely fabulous. Uh, when I first finished it, I was um, I was kind of torn because I absolutely love it. I think it looks amazing. And I also think it's very extravagant and it's quite sort of out there. And so I know it's not gonna necessarily be everybody's cup of tea, but I think there is a way to scale back the, the extravagance <laughs> um, if you just wanted to add, like like I said, one layer of fringe. I'm currently working on a second variation and this is gonna be a shawl variation rather than the cowl. And I'm knitting that using the same yarn. Uh, what's going on here? Oh yes, yeah, so I'm in the middle of a row. That's what's going on here. <laughs> which just about sums my life up right now. So uh, so yes, I'm knitting it in the same yarn, which is uh, uh, Sweet Flax by Ginger Twist, and this is in the color Lally Broch. So you can see it's got the same, it's got the same ratio of increases, it's got the same stockinette bands divided by the, divided by the eyelets, and then we have the eye cord edging, with uh, with increases at either end. So, and there's gonna be fringing added to this also. So um, I'm just finishing off the first skein with that and I've got a second skein here, which I'm gonna uh, break into and particularly to finish it off, but then also to add the fringing. So, um, so yes, there's going to be that coming in the end of April. So not too long to wait for that project. That again is in a cocoon tree bag. 
So that is basically all the knitting, I think, my loves. Um, I'm really excited about everything that's on my needles. I, I just wish I had slightly more time to, to work on it all. Uh, but I want to show you, well, I want to show you a couple of things that are going to be coming up on my needles soon after all of this busy, busy period has passed and has settled a little bit. Um, the first is that North Bay Fibre, who's Jill, Jill Zielinski, uh, North Bay Fibre, and this North Bay Fibre is absolutely divine. This is the Elemental Sport base. It's 100% Cormo wool. We don't get Cormo wool, I don't think, in the UK. It's not something that, that you see at all. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like a, is that a Corridale? merino mix and uh, and this is the this is the fiber that it produces and oh my goodness it is so incredibly soft it's, it's just out of this world i cannot wait to knit with this yarn so jill very kindly jill of north bay fiber uh, very kindly got in touch with me and offered to send me a kit for the artist's shawl, which was an incredibly generous gift. And she's even, she's ex expanded on that generosity by uh, giving me a discount code to share with all of you. So if you go to her website, North Bay Fibre website, and I'll add that, uh, I'll add that link into the show notes, uh, then you can go and get a 10% discount site-wide until the end of May by using the code AMY10 and that's all capital letters A-M-Y 10 and that will give you 10% off, 10% discount so you can try out some of this amazing yarn too. So I'll show you the colours that she sent me. So this colour is Coho and it's kind of like a pearlescent grey I think I would describe it and this is the main colour for the artist shawl. So I've got two skeins of this, and then I've got three contrast skeins. Let me just grab them here. So we have Holly, we have Natural, which is the Undyed, we have Lotus, and we have Rock Bottom, which is such an interesting colour, actually. It looks black, but actually I would say it's maybe like a very, very dark purple like like a super dark aubergine you know and when you when you see that the aubergine skin it almost looks almost looks black but it's actually this very very deep purpley black so those are the contrast colors and that's the main color so that's the that's the whole kit I mean it was just such an incredibly generous gift thank you so much Jill the like I said the yarn is incredible and I'm so impressed with the um, with the consistency and the intensity of the color, look at that in the lotus. It's just, or you can see it as well in the holly. Look at those two colors together. Oh, I cannot wait. Literally cannot wait to cast this on. Um, and the only thing that's holding me back from casting that on is that I've got all these deadlines, and I've also got a lot going on in the background. So. <laughs> But, uh, but that will absolutely be going onto my needles as soon as possible because I'm just absolutely itching to work with this amazing, bouncy, squishy, soft, delicious yarn. So, so yes, uh, North Bay Fibre, Elemental Sport, 100% Cormo. Oh, I should tell you, um, it's 297 meters per 100 grams or 325 yards. So it is a super bouncy, bouncy ply. I think it's going to have a really lovely handle. Um, and I'm very excited to cast that on. The artist shawl, incidentally, is this gorgeous colour work shawl, quite geometric in style, and it's by Natasha Hornby. And now Natasha Hornby is uh, based over in Holland, in Amsterdam. And my husband and I were actually both over in Amsterdam quite recently uh, because we were supporting my son who was over exploring some opportunities over there. So my husband went over first and um, then with him and then a couple of weeks later I went over. 
And so when my husband came back, he had brought these beautiful skeins with them. Then, because he had gone to Stephen and Penelope. How amazing was that? And look at these gorgeous, gorgeous skeins that he brought back. So this is the Urban Pearl. And it's Lux High Twist and the colorway is Urban Chaos. It's 80% uh, merino, 20% silk, 365 meters to 100 grams. It's got these fabulous like pops. Just, I love it, love it. And then this gorgeous one is, is um, the Ching Fiber Dashing Sassy, which is a single ply merino base. Um, single ply Africa, South African merino base. It's 400 meters to 100 grams and this colorway is called Fox. Look at that, as an F-A, F-A-W-K-E-S, as in Guy Fox, not as in F-O-X. <laughs> but look at these beautiful colors. So he got me these two gorgeous skeins. And then when I went back, um, a couple of weeks later, I popped into Stephen and Penelope's as well, and I bought two skeins of their Glow Hair in the West Wool uh, brand. So this is their Mohair, which is 400 meters to 50 grams, and it's 72% Mohair, 28% silk, and this is in the Canal Boat. Canal Boat? No, Canal House. <laughs> the Canal House colorway which is this kind of very beautiful, deep charcoal gray shade. And the reason why I got this was because I thought it went really well with both of the skeins that my husband had brought back for me. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with these yet. It's uh, again, to be decided. Um, I haven't had a huge amount of time to, to plan out knitting projects. But um, but I really like both of these, how they look with this uh, gorgeous glow hair. So those were my, those are my Amsterdam purchases. Um, I, I did buy some other things, um, but those are for my mum's birthday. And so I'm not gonna show them here because mum, you have to wait until you get to, you get to open your package. So, <laughs> so I, I'm not gonna share them here on the, on the podcast. <laughs> I'll maybe share a photograph of them once she's once she's got the once she's got her present. So, so yes, that's uh, that's basically all of the knitting. So just to kind of fill you in a bit about uh, kind of what's been going on and why we're why we're so incredibly busy. Uh, we were approached by a company called Changeworks, who's been given a budget by the Scottish government to support uh, some part some owners of older properties to uh, add in retrofitted insulation to create warmer homes to reduce power bills and to um, I suppose to do our bit for the for the environment you know so uh, so we agreed to to that uh, project and we kind of well we we agreed to it before Christmas but then of course Christmas is terribly busy even more busy. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if it's even more busy. But anyway, it's, it's a very busy time. And so we put it off. And so eventually uh, we decided we we're going to do it in March. So it meant that we had to move all of our possessions and furniture away from any wall that was going to be getting this retrofit insulation treatment. So that was a big endeavor because I think there's only two rooms in the whole apartment that weren't being treated. So uh, that was a lot of maneuvering and a lot of shifting and, and, and trying to make things as easy as possible for the workmen when they came in. Uh, we then had two days of the joiners coming in and they were cutting these big panels of insulation and adding them to these, adding them to the interior of all exterior facing walls and all walls that face a stairwell. Now, for example, this wall back here is a wall that faces onto the stairwell. And before, uh, when you touched the wall, it would be very, very cold because there would be a draft coming up the stairwell and uh, and it would uh, it would chill the whole. This, this room would actually be pretty chilly um, as a whole. Um, so we had the we had them here 
twice over two days and then we had the plasters come in and they had to finish the walls all off and then we had to have the plumber and the electrician back to uh, refit any radiators and sockets and all of that kind of stuff so it's been a huge amount of disruption and then because everything was already so disrupted we decided that we were going to kind of get on with things and actually paint the walls and uh, paint them in the colours that we had always wanted. So you can see that I am now in a beautiful yellow sunroom. Uh, this is the first room, well, not including the box room, which is where I keep my yarn. It's a beautiful dark inky blue. Um, so that was finished first uh, because that would mean that we could get everything kind of moved back into the cupboard that needed to go in there. And then we got this one finished, which meant that we could get all our books put in here and that cleared out some of the other rooms. My husband is currently working on our bedroom, so we'll hopefully get that finished in the next couple of days. And then we will start on our lounge. Um, up until now, I mean, we've been in here for about two and a half years now. Um, up till now, we've just lived with the, with the colours that the previous owners uh, chose. Um, which which have been absolutely fine, but they've just not really been us, and it's not really reflected our personal tastes or, um, or the kind of colours or, um, decor that we would generally surround ourselves with. Not really our aesthetic. That's the word. So before this, we had been living in oh, itchy nose, <laughs> all that mohair. Um, before this, we'd been living in rental properties for many many years. And when you live in a rental property, you don't get the, you often don't have permission to change the look of your home. You are kind of at the whim of your landlord and their aesthetic. And then you just kind of, kind of cobble together something that feels like you as best you possibly can with your, with your art or your, um, or your soft furnishings or your furniture or your books or whatever it is but you don't get an opportunity generally to, to change the colour of the walls or the carpets or anything like that uh, so you kind of you I found that I was inhabiting my spaces in the rental properties but um, but not okay uh, there was a bit of a remove from that there was not quite like a full um, a fully living into my space and after having lived in this home, which we which we now own, um, for the last couple of years, it seems to have taken that length of time to actually come to the awareness that I can live into this space and I can make it something. Um, I can make it look the way that I want it to look. I can make it into my own aesthetic. Uh, so that's that's basically what we've been doing. But it's. It's just been a lot of work because all of these plastered walls obviously all needed um, undercoats, all needed treated. The woodwork has, has been uh, new as well so we've had to get that treated and painted and, and and then of course moving everything from one room to another and so it's just been a massive amount of work and especially when you're trying to fit it around you know your regular regular work so all my client calls and things and I've also been keeping up with my astrology classes as well as I'm working towards certification with the Faculty of Astrology. So I've been fitting that in around that too. I've got homework due in, which uh, I haven't done yet, so <laughs> I need to try and get that done next week <laughs> uh, as I continue to move forward in my studies. I've also signed up for the Faculty of Astrology Summer School that's going to be happening down in Oxford in August. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. And uh, I have kind of like a deep dive into, into astrology with lots of people who, who love astrology and speak the language of the stars. So, um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but yes, it's just been an incredibly full on time Every night uh, we're exhausted by the time we get to the end. Um, my hands have actually been quite sore from, um, well, partially from lifting things and carrying things and moving things, but also from the painting itself. Got a big blister on the side of my on the side of my hand um, from the from the roller. So um, so yes, I'm trying to take good care of my hands, which means that um, I'm not necessarily able to do the amount of knitting that I would normally do. That said, I don't think I did too badly. <laughs> 
but yes, it's just been very, very full on and it will be kind of for like the next week, I would say, as we get the rest of the flat painted and everything moved back to where it's meant to go. Uh, we've got more bookcases to assemble and all of that kind of thing. So it's basically a home makeover and it was the the kind of the retrofitting of the of the insulation that's really kind of galvanized that that process. So hugely grateful for the funding to to do that. That was um, that was incredible, and uh, and yeah, I'm hoping that it does make a big difference this coming this coming winter and keeps us keeps us cozy in our home. Our home was built in the 1890s, and it's in an old stone sandstone tenement that overlooks the harbour. So um, so it's a beautiful location. It's a beautiful old flat, and it has had some modernisations over the years. But this one, I think, will really make a, a huge difference to our experience of, of living and inhabiting our home. So that's what's going on in the background. <laughs> but yes, you can see this lovely sunny yellow in our sunroom and I've got all my beautiful books up. And um, yeah, it's we're, we're getting there slowly, slowly but surely. Anyway, my loves, I'm going to wind things up there just now because I've got more things to do this afternoon. Um, as I said, I'm not going to do a lot of editing on this. I'm just going to get it up as soon as I possibly can with my show notes. Um, but I hope to see you again really soon for episode 53. We'll see what knitting I've managed to achieve in the meantime. And uh, I will also maybe show you a little bit of the, the other rooms that we've painted so that you can see kind of what we've done with our space. And because uh, I have been pretty, you might not be surprised to hear this, I've been pretty bold with my colour choices uh, with the inky blue in the in the box room and the sunny yellow in the sunroom. Uh, so I will maybe share with you some of the other colours that we've chosen and the decor that we've kind of gone for. Um, and the other thing was that uh, I've managed to put all of my knitting books together. And so I now have a proper knitting library. So I was thinking it maybe about doing an episode where I would take you through some of my books. Uh, quite a lot of my books are older books from the 80s, uh, 80s and 90s. So um, they're good for inspiration and uh, and sort of slightly different approaches, I think, than, than you see generally in some of the more popular patterns on Ravelry. Um, I think there's some really quite different things in some of those texts. And I've got some knitwear books that are just simply for like vintage knitwear images for, for inspiration there too. So uh, so I thought maybe I would take you through my knitting library sometime and, and pick out some of my favourites to share with you. But yes, okay, let's wind things up there. I've got a wee poem to share with you just again on this theme of generosity um, that I thought you might really enjoy. Um, and of course, I had it all lined up and Instagram has switched everything around again and I've lost it. So let me find it. <laughs> so typical. Thank you very much, Instagram. There it is. It's called A Riddle of the Soul and it's by M.K. Joseph. I cannot give unless I have. I cannot have unless I save. Unless I have, I cannot save. Unless I give, I cannot have. Unless I live, I cannot be. Unless I am, I cannot seem. I cannot be unless I seem. I cannot live unless I am. I cannot be unless I give. I cannot have unless I die. Unless I grieve, I cannot love. Unless I die, I cannot live. So just a wee short poem. I rather like that one, The Riddle of the Soul. Okay, my darlings, I'm going to release you into the rest of your days and the rest of your evenings so you can go do whatever it is that you need to do today. I do hope that this has provided a little bit of a break and a little bit of company, perhaps while you've been working on your own knitting and crocheting and making. And uh, yeah, like I said, I hope to be back with you again really soon with some more knitting and some more projects. Okay, my loves, take good care. And I'll speak again to you really soon.